relationship with the press has has not been the best to run you. It's been um, it's been a tough tough learning curve. I feel with the with the media in uh, in England, as it has been for for many players. Um, you know, we we seem to be broadcast as as um, you know something something we're not a lot of the time, and I think it's um, it's la- it's lazy journalism. Ever since he was 16, Stephen Cork has been growing up and playing football under the watch of the public eye. He has made headlines for its success and felt the impacts of negative tabloid stories. Like many other football players, Stephen has had his life played out across the media. But what is he really like away from the spotlight and off the pitch? For the first time ever, Stephen invites me into his apartment in Liverpool to take a look into his life which challenges the images of glamour and luxury associated with football and reveals the true dedication it takes to being a Premier League player. I welcome you to join me in discovering the true life of a football player. Stephen Corker, off the pitch. I think from I think from a young age I knew I wanted to be a footballer. Growing up in Feltham, um, it was all sort of my dream to, to go on and, and play football. You know, at that at the time, um, I think Blue was Thierry Reed, that was my idol for, for Arsenal. I used to play over the park and play over the Feltham schools day in, day out, just aspiring to, 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 to be one of the best. And I felt from, from the age of four or five when I was out in the back garden kicking the ball around and, and then progressing onto the park and Sunday league football, I always had has it in the heart to, to become a footballer. There was a stage at 12 or 13 when I got into athletics and was doing the 800 metres for the borough and the county and progressed quite nicely into that, but I just found that my main passion was, was, was with football and I was thankful when I finally got the chance at 15 to, to go and join Tottenham Hotspur, who at the time had a, a fantastic academy and, and obviously no, no regrets for, for sure. And I'm thankful I chose football over the, over the running. In contrast to the image of glamour associated with football, Stephen lives in a small reclusive apartment with all the blinds closed to keep his privacy and the only personal possessions being a line of shoes along his corridor. Stephen Corker's barren house, empty of personal possessions, reflects the loneliest side of playing for clubs around Britain. Being on the roof constantly is, is, is slightly difficult. You know, I've got my got my son who is a fair distance from me right now. Obviously, me, me being up north and him, him being down south, so that's 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 tough time. You know, get around it. But yeah, of course it's tough. You know, but nowadays with the technology, you've got FaceTime, you've got Skype with the family and friends. So it's um, it's doable. But yeah, it's uh, I think again, it's just part of sacrifices you've got to make if you want to play at the top. You want to you want to be the best you can be. Then you. So it's part and parcel of your career. Starkly different from the party life portrayed by the press, Stephen's life is oddly mundane. Stephen describes himself as a normal guy who just goes about his day-to-day life like everyone else. I'd start off, I'd get up at eight, go in slightly early, get on a, uh, get some treatment done, get your breakfast down you, which would normally consist of you know, scrambled egg on toast or, or an omelette, something like this, with high protein and a small amount of carbs for, for the session ahead. You would then have the training session finished off with, you know, ice baths, sort of gym session. Um, it's all, all very dependent on the individual. I like to, to take up my day by by doing these little extra bits to obviously gain that gain that extra yard. And coming home from training, um, you you know tend to be around half one, two o'clock, where I then spend the afternoon working on my new um, project, which is um, Serious About Lifting, which is an online lifestyle fitness brand, where I put some work into to getting the kids off, off the streets um, and giving them sort of a goal or sort of aim to, to you know, whether that's looking after their body or um, lifting heavy weights or whatever their, their specific their sort of drive is, whether it's football, whether it's boxing, you know, we'll, we'll talk to them and, um, you know, give them plenty of tips. Um, that's, that takes up a large amount of my time and, you know, from over the years I've also attempted to do a, a fair bit of charity work where I've supported Action Aid in you know, um, building a school in, in Africa. So. That's something that you know I couldn't have, couldn't have imagined doing as, as a kid. So to get these opportunities to to give back um, to help those who you know are not might not be on the right path right now, or those less fortunate, is, is something I sort of thrive on and something I try to do as much as possible. Stephen has been working with David Wright, the founder of Serious About Lifting, to help get children into sports through posting videos of their workout regimes on social media. So I went along to one of David's training sessions to find out what the duo do to keep fit and what his plans are for their brand. Well, with Stephen being a defender, obviously strength is key. And that's where you can relate to being serious about lifting because 
if you were to be a defender, you need to be a brick house, you need to be hard to get through. Do you know what I'm saying? If um, opposition's coming, you need to be able to hold the ground, stand your ground, manoeuvre through, power, push through, is a bit assertive. So what kind of things we do is a lot of um, explosive strength, strength training, and that will help with the outburst of power. So we can do like pause rep exercises on the bench press, pause rep of squats, loads of, exp- loads of explosive movements. When we're not in the gym, the fitness lifestyle doesn't end there. We have to maintain a strict diet, because being an athlete, you're at the top of your game, so you need to be eating very, very clean. You need to be tracking all your macros, because you get what you put in. If you're not fueled correctly, you're not going to perform correctly. So even if we're going out to eat, we're very limited to what we can eat. We normally get like grilled chicken, um, some veg, so we just try to keep it clean, even when we're out and about. Um, Stephen being on the move, you know, uh, well, he's not local to me anymore. Um, that's, that's the great thing about telephone. You can, you can talk via WhatsApp. You know, sometimes you might send me a picture of a meal that he's put together. So look at this, check this. It looks really, looks really nice. But you're like, wait, hold on, is that healthy? Is that no? Don't worry about it. Fix my macros. So yeah, it's just a telephone to communicate when he's on the go. Unlike Stephen, David doesn't like to say get the kids off the streets. So he elaborates further on what his mission is for Serious About Lifting. Um, one of our aims for Serious About Lifting is to get. Um, not, well, I wouldn't like to word, use the word kids off the street. Is to make fitness the in thing, the cool thing. When you're making something the in thing, the cool thing, to be hanging about doing X, Y, Z, now it's like going to gym, it's a social thing, or oh, I go to the gym, I do this, it's the cool thing. Whatever's cool, kids follow, it's a trend. So even though Stephen does so many positive things for children around the world, from building a school in Sierra Leone to helping kids get into sports, so why is it then that the press focus on the negative aspects that come with being a football player instead of these positive ones? Yeah, it's a strange one with, with the press as to why they have so much focus on the negativity um, surrounding football because there's a lot of a lot of charities, uh, so a lot of players giving to, to different charities. You know, I, f- I feel like the, the you know the positive things we do are are going are going missed. From our point of view, you know, we're we're normal people. We you know we, we we hang around with normal people. We're no different to normal people. We come a lot of us come from working class backgrounds, and you know we appreciate everything we have. But the negativity doesn't just stop with the tabloids. Stephen outlines the backlash that he gets across social media, including Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, there's quite a lot of backlash with, with social media. I'm not sure where this sort of gap's been created from, from the players to the public. It, it never used to be like that um, many years ago, as I'm told. So I think there's a lot of maybe jealousy um, or envy, shall I say, with, with the, the money that obviously footballers, footballers are paid. Um, maybe that creates a, creates a bit of a gap that then... Us as players, you know, appreciate and respect the fans. You know, when they come every week, they spend the hard earned money, they've travelled up and down the country to watch us, you know, we appreciate that. There's, there's no there's no question about that. Uh, we were we were once fans ourselves growing up as, as kids, you know, loving football and we know how hard it, it can be. Um, but you know, when we lose we we're just disappointed. There's 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 no uh, there's no no mistake in that. Seems clearly a man with a mission, but what are his final goals? For me my final goal is is to, to be at Liverpool, that'd be that'd be amazing. You know, that's you know you don't get you don't get many bigger clubs um, out in the worldwide. Really, it's it's one of the biggest and one, one of the best. So to be part of it right now is is fantastic. So if I can make this um, temporary loan into into something permanent, it'd be fantastic. What is clear is that the press and the media glamorise and exaggerate the life of football players when really that's just not the case. You can see from the short amount of time I've had with Stephen that he really is a normal guy and away from the flashlights and the floodlights, he just wants a private life at home with his family and friends. Stephen Corker is just one of the football players that the media have targeted and spread stories that are intrusive and at times not true. But we forget that behind these tabloid stories is a footballer who trains hard, is dedicated to sport and at the end of the day is only human. (laughs) 